Alright you guys, what's going on and welcome back, it's your boy Elio here with another MSO video. Now in this video we're going to be talking about the different gem types of the game. I've like made this own list myself which took me quite a while to do but it's something that I wanted to put together and just finally address on the channel because as many as as many of you guys know, especially with my monster reviews, that you don't really ever see me put in the gem sets. Like I say, you know, if you should put a mon on HP attack attack or crit damage attack attack, etc. I put that, but I never put gem sets specifically for those mons in the video for the simple reason that I'm already providing you with information about that mon. I'm already providing you a way to gem up that mon. And I want you to do a little bit of work. I want you to understand the different gem sets of the game and how you can use that to your advantage depending on what situation that you're going to put your mon in. Because the main issue that I found with me recommending a specific set for you guys, like say for instance Dark Indra. Let's say Dark Indra should only be on Intuition or Ruin. My fear, and I know that some people will do this and some people won't, but my fear is especially for newer players that start the game, they pull a Dark Ender, they're going to be like, okay, well, Elio says Intuition or Ruin, so technically speaking, my Dark Ender isn't usable because he can't have a, a Intuition with Max Crit, or he, can, he can't have Ruin with Max Crit, so they're like, you know what, he's useless, let me release him, or let me just not use him at all. And that's a very, very big sinkhole that I don't want any player, especially if you're a, a newbie, doing with the game. I, I want you to have your mons gemmed up pro properly, at least on a broken set, until you can move over onto a full set. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the full sets that I deemed at least valuable by my regards. There's some sets that I cut out because I don't think they're useful at all, but it's really up to you. But just general consensus, especially for the monster review videos, Get them on a broken set if that's all that you can afford. There's nothing wrong with a broken set. And then as you level up your account, as you learn more about the game, as you farm golems more, uh, then start to narrow in on certain mods or get them on a full, really, really good set and then move on to the next. Don't tunnel vision yourself and focusing, okay, I have to have this mod on a Valor set only or it's complete trash because that's when people quit the game. That's when you get frustrated because... RNG cucked you and you're going to be a very very angry person but let's go ahead and get right into it you guys all right so starting off here I do have like these little things over here on the very very right which says O for offense D for defense and H for healer and by healer I'm also meaning recovery types so if you look over here on the very very far left of the screen I went ahead and put in those uh, letters to be assigned with those gems as well so if you didn't want to really you know go this go through this entire video with me and uh, pay attention to what I'm saying. You can just look over here at the right and say, oh, for offense, let me look over here to the left side. Okay, a Valor set is normally for offensive Mons, Mons that are gonna do some form of damage, whether that's sap or raw damage, etc. That's for a Mon that is probably going to be an attacker type. So that's another easy way to go through this list with me. But anyway, starting off here with Gem of Valor, the Gem of Valor set gives you a 20% attack boost. So 20% of your current attack is the benefit that you get from having a full-on Valor set. Now the types used for the Gem of Valor set, uh, mainly most of the types used on the, the Gem of Valor set is going to be attacker types and balance types. And in my opinion, the Valor set is best used on mods that aren't affected by crit. And what I mean by not affected by crit is... If a mod specifically says in its skill set that it has to have crit in order for that move to work, unless you can pull off max crit with the Valor set, I'm saying don't use it. For example, curse mods. Let's say that you have, I don't know, was it Water Jiangshi? She's a curse mod. Perfectly fine on Valor. Why? Because crit doesn't do anything for curse. Same thing with what Water Yormagander. He has curse and he also has an attack based shield. So having higher base attack is very, very important for him. Same thing with Sappers. For instance, Fire Persephone or um, Water Artemis. Both of these mons use Sap, and in my opinion, I think a Valor set is just as viable on them as any other set that you could put on them. Why Valor? Even though Sap doesn't scale off attack, it does race up. It does raise their base attack up, which they're already at 3k in terms of their base uh, attack, which isn't 
bad at all. So why not raise your raw damage up even though they're already going to apply a sap? I know you might say, well, Elio, um, I already run my sappers on a tank set. Well, congratulations, you're kind of doing it wrong because if that mon is surviving throughout the waves with only an HP gem on them, why not get more raw damage out of them to help your wave clearers out or help just kill the golem slightly faster? But those are just examples of what you could use on a Gem of Valor set. Um, I do have one of my Dracas on a uh, Gem of Valor set. Uh, it is rocking max crit though, and it actually has a crit damage gem on it. And uh, it does some pretty good damage if you can pull that off as well. So that's a good example, hopefully, that can help you guys. Uh, moving on next though, we have the Gem of Leech set, which when equipped, it gives you 20% HP drain. By HP drain, it means that you can drain... 20% um, of, I believe, your damage back to your own Mon. So, say for instance, if I have a Gem of Leech set and my Wood Merlin is at 1 HP, if I go over here and hit the Titan, which I just said that completely wrong, I'll explain it. But if I go over here and I have 1 HP on my Wood Merlin on a pimped out Gem of Leech set and I hit the Titan, well, due to the modifier of Courageous Strike hitting outrageous amounts of damage because of the high HP, HP pull of the Titan, Congratulations, boys. Merlin just fully healed himself. I totally said the beginning wrong. Gem of Leech is way, way superior than just 20% of the damage that you deal to that Mon. I do believe. Or I'm getting confused. But anyways, the, the more damage that you do as a Courageous Striker with Gem of Leech, the more uh, HP that you're going to get back. So it's very, very helpful for self-sustain. But obviously, it's more of an in-game build where your Mon should be doing a ton of damage to make sure that they're perfectly healed each and every round which really makes titans go for a lot longer than what they are and for the types of that usually these are, these are put on attacker slash balance types depending on whatever mon that you're running for example as i said wood merlin is a good example fire shinobi basically i find that gem of bleach should be exclusively on courageous strikers i could be wrong here but they get the most benefit of it because they do the most damage in the game and of course that's going to promote more self-sustain just due to the excess of amount of damage that they do means they're going to get their all of their hp back so that's my thoughts on it and obviously for my uh, description of it it's best to use on mons that can deal a lot of damage uh, moving on next though we have gem of siphon which applies 40 percent sp drain in terms of the whole set if you can get it up there and this is best used on attacker types and in my opinion, it's best to use on mons that are wave clearers. Now, I'm not saying that a mon has to be a dedicated wave clearer in order to take advantage of SP Siphon. Well, not SP Siphon, but Gem of Siphon. But wave clearers definitely get a nice and steady boost from the uh, Siphon set on them. And if a mon isn't really a wave clearer, but they have like Hunter or something else on their 5 star skill, boys, feel free to use this and put that up there. That just means that they're going to get their active off. Say for instance, Dark Wild Fang. If you can get her on a super duper pog uh, siphon set, congratulations. She's basically your wave clear. Like, wave clearers aren't just the mons with morale boost and elemental edge slash hunter. For my wave clearers tier list, that was the example that I provided, which isn't wrong. It's just that with a, as, with a siphon set, though, almost anything can become a wave clearer if they already contain a lot of damage within their kit. It's just that wave clearers in general obviously get even more of an SP gain of having a siphon set on them. But uh, for example, Fire Draca, you can run on a siphon set. It could be triple attack. It could be crit rate attack attack. It could be attack attack crit damage. Dark Mona, which a lot of newer players get from the contract. Not a contract, but just being a newbie in the game is another wave clearer. Dark Tina on a siphon set. You can have Light Jack on a siphon set. As I stated before, you can have a mon like Dark Wild Thing on a siphon set. You could have Wood Gene on a siphon set. There's plenty of mons that benefit from a siphon set. And while this isn't super duper useful in a PvP situation because mons are just super duper tanky, this makes PvE a complete and utter joke. So having a siphon set means that you can farm out things super duper quickly and you can get those sub, you know, 50 second clear times on extreme and it just makes the farming aspect of the game even in terms of golems just a lot more quicker and a lot more better and efficient so sp siphon i mean not sp siphon i keep saying sp siphon gem of siphon is definitely one of those sets that you want to have as soon as possible because even one 
crappy siphon set is a lot better than nothing at all. Moving on though, we have the Gem of Conviction set though, which offers 20% resist with all three of those gems being Gem of Conviction. And the types used for the Gem of Conviction set is Defenders usually, there's Balance types, there's Healers, and there's also Tanks. Um, the best, it's best used on Mons that need help with maxing out their resist. Now this is more of a kind of newer player type of gem, like it's still used at high level or basically in-game gameplay of MSL, but especially as a noob cake kid, uh, it's very, very important because what resist does is it prevents ailments being put on or debuffs being put on to your Mon. So if a Mon can shock you, if your Mon has enough resistance against that shock, it won't stick at all, which renders that passive basically useless for that one turn, which is very, very important in not only a PvE situation, but also a PvP situation if you want to be the victor. Now, this is mainly used on mons that are in PvP, slash clan versus clan, and also titans, and it's nothing to scoff at. 20% is a big chunk, so if you're having resist issues where you feel like your mon isn't at max resist, either due to trinkets or even if it's on a broken set, and this is a mon that you use as a defensive part of your team for PvP or clan versus clan, Go ahead and throw that resist up there. There are certain titans where you need some resist set as well. If you can get them with decent recovery up there, feel free to go ahead and throw some resist up there for them as well. That way, you know, they're able to do their task for titans. Say, for instance, I needed a healer to make sure that they can heal or put up their attack up. Well, if my resistance is too low, they're not going to do that. So I want to make sure that they can do that. And, I mean, it's pretty simple from there. Higher the resist, the better it is. Obviously, once you get... A broken set or better sets as you come along resist will only be subs at that point and you can get near max resist with just subs alone and then gem of conviction will fall off but it's very very easy if you're just looking for max resist to get it from this set moving on though we have the gem of zeal set which uh gives you a plus 15 percent attack and crit rate up there which is pretty spicy um the types used on the gem of zeal set is mainly attacker types and balance types and in my opinion it's best used on mons that are crit reliant so say for instance dark gatito he has hunter congratulations he's crit he's crit reliant because if he doesn't crit hunter doesn't activate which means his five star skill is basically useless so if Amon is crit reliant, this is one of the sets I would look more towards. And not and not to mention you don't have to necessarily be crit reliant. If Amon has Stalker, like Dark Wild Thing, for example, you could go ahead and throw on Gem of Zeal up there as well. That just makes life all much easier. You don't really have to re rely so much on your subs because you're getting it from the entire set. So Mons with Hunter, like I said before, Dark Gatito is a good example of this. Um, courageous Strikers, like Wood Merlin, for example, if you can get this set on him, it's perfectly fine. Uh, there are better sets that you could put on Mons, but in terms of this pure usage, any Mon that you need to deal a whole bunch of damage that needs crit or can benefit from crit is pretty much where Gem of Zeal is the most useful at. Moving on though, we have the Gem of Safety set right here, and this set gives you plus 30% defense, and then it also takes away 10% of your attack. Now, the Gem of Safety set is pretty much only usable on these types, which is Defender types, Balance types, and Tank types. And it's best used on Mons where damage doesn't really matter. When I say damage doesn't really matter, I'm implying that they don't really use their attack stat at all. Now, you can argue and say that, oh, I could throw this on Dark Miho, as long as this triple HP, Go ahead. I mean, it does raise up her defense by a decent chunk, but she doesn't really use her attack because she's an HP aggressor. But I find that this is more useful on, obviously, defense aggressors because it boosts up their defense a little bit more than what the Gem of Protection set does. And that could raise up their damage and survivability as well, as long as defense down isn't applied to them. And also tanks, etc. Like, say, for instance, you have a... Who, who would I say? Say for instance you have like a Water Shiva. You could put this set on Water Shiva. Water Shiva doesn't really use his attack. He's just there to be a F word and be super annoying with his HP Siphon and um, not HP Siphon, his SP Siphon and I can't remember his other move at the moment. But he's just there to be annoying. 
go ahead and throw that set on him. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as he can survive or as long as it promotes his survivability, this set is one of the sets to use just for that. Basically, if you have a mon that you can think can be super duper annoying with this or benefit the most from it, like a defense aggressor, feel free to throw it up there. If not, you could always build your aggressors, especially defense aggressors, with a little bit more damage if you're feeling froggy. Up next, though, we have the Gem of Indomitability, which provides 10% uh, defense and resist. So you get 10% defense and then 10% resist added up there, which is kind of like a in-between of like protection and conviction, but doesn't really excel on either one. But the mods that benefit from this the most are defender types, balance types, healers, and tanks. And in my opinion, it's best used on defensive mods. Is this the best set in the world? Absolutely not. But once again, for my example, a uh, mod like Light Nike could benefit from this because not only is she getting defense because she is a defense aggressor, and especially with her having just dirt nasty low resist, this could help push her over to the edge and get her resist max, if not near max. And another mod, for example, is Dark Merlin, where if you're having resist issues, but you also want him to retain some version of tankiness, this could be a compromise as well. Once again, the goal of this gem set, though, is just to kind of round out more tankier mons or mons that you want to either survive and take benefit of having a higher defense stat or mons that you just want to survive and be annoying like Dark Merlin, for example, in a PvP situation where building Dark Merlin offensively doesn't really do anything, but building, I mean, not defensively, but building Dark Merlin offensively doesn't really do anything, but building him defensively helps him to survive and helps him get his 5-star skill off. So think of a mon that you have that's super duper defensive, that you just need to round out. He just needs a little bit more help, and this gem set so hopefully could hopefully provide you with some uh, well-needed assistance. Uh, moving on next though, we have Gem of Salvation, which gives you 15% HP and then 15% recovery as well. Now the types best used for Gem, Gem of Salvation is Defender types, Tank types, and Healers. And in my opinion, this is best used on recovery dependent mons. Because why would you use it on anything else when they're not super duper reliant on recovery at all? So basically, I would just mainly focus this on mons that are healers. Even though I have the healer's type, not every single healer is under the healer or recovery type. There is like what, Water Cure, who's a tank type. There's someone else I, I could have sworn is a defender. Water Bass, I believe, is a tank. So it's basically a blanket statement of using whatever mons, especially in a Titan situation, that need not only an HP boost, but also recovery, if you can pull both of those off at the same time. But as I provided in my example, a mon like Water Bass could definitely benefit from this because of its super duper nasty, low recovery, Pixie, etc. Wood Mini Cat, whatever healer that you need is very pretty much just Titan specific or healer specific of mons that you need to get that recovery off so they can get their recovery off super duper quick and it can also be as potent as possible. Wood Hana fits this bill. There's there's a diamond dozen. There's a diamond dozen. Just check out all the Titans mons that you need in terms of healers. And if you have it, feel free to throw them on this set. You don't have to throw them on this set, but that's where you can get the most use out of that gem set for those specific mons. Moving on though, we have the Gem of Armor set, which gives you 30% crit damage and also plus 15% defense. Now the types that's best used on on this gem set is defenders slash attackers, but it's best used on attackers, but some defenders as well. So say for instance, you had a mon like Dark Sea Star, for example. Dark Sea Star is a defense aggressor, so why not go ahead and give her plenty of defense, which 15% isn't nothing to scoff at, but also go ahead and raise up her crit damage because she is a dark type. She already has higher uh, base crit damage than all the other mons, so why not benefit from that additional damage and boost up her DPS as well? Another good example of this is Light Siegfried, who also is a light mon, but isn't really a defense aggressor, but since you're going to be running him probably crit damage attack attack or some variant of that somewhere where crit 
is going to be added up there to get maximum damage out of his courageous strike why not throw him throw him on a gem of armor set because not only are you getting most of the benefits of like a ruin set but you're getting a little bit more defense on him to help him take a little bit more hits and hopefully do a little bit more damage so very very specific set but once it's put on a mon that can benefit from that additional crit damage and also a little bit added survivability can also be very very potent up next though is the gem of longevity and this gem set gives you uh hp plus 10 percent and also resist plus 10 percent which i feel like i've read before but we're just going to keep on no it was the hp and recovery but gem of longevity uh the types used on this is mainly defender types there's tank types and also healers and it's best used on defensive base mods now what do I mean by defensive base mons? I don't mean mons that are defense aggressors. I mean mons that are going to be used in a defensive manner. Especially for like clan versus clan defense or PvP defense, etc. So for example, Dark Miho could definitely benefit from this if you're having once again resist issues with her. Not only can you get a little bit more HP out of her to add some more survivability slash a little bit more damage. But if you're having resist issues where you can't hit maximum resist. Once again, this is super useful. Even if you can't hit maximum resist and you can hit it super duper easy, it's also a little bit more beneficial because you can get away with a little bit less resist and maybe focus on a little bit more like a crit rate sub to get, once again, a little bit more damage out of her. The same thing applies here to Dark Cupid and then Water Persephone as well, where you want to raise up their HP. And if you want to slack a little bit on subs, you can also hit them with max resist just by giving them this gem set. Up next though is a gem of healer set and what the gem of healer set does is it's HP gain by 10% of that mon's HP for every turn. Now as far as I remember this set activates regardless of what's going on so even if you stun a mon or you shock them they're still going to gain uh, HP which can be super duper annoying especially for mons with high HP pulls. Like say for instance we have our types right here which is defender mons, balance types, healers and tanks because why would you run a DPS or an attacker type on an HP gain set when their main selling point is damage? Why would you do that? I'm sure someone out there has done it, but it is what it is. But it's best to use on mons that already gain HP or use shields just to add some more survivability and add more um, F-wordness to that mon, which just, you know, the whole goal of this is just to make people curse, to be honest. But an example of this is Light Venus, even though I don't really see Light Venus used anymore in PvP because people have finally wised up, and she's definitely not as free as she was uh, in the past. Uh, once again, Water Persephone, Dark Merlin, etc. Pretty much any Mon that has a high HP pull, you can either even throw Dark Miho up there, even though she's not super duper good. Light Shiva, any Mon with Battle Rush and a high HP pull really benefits from this because even though that you're shocking them or doing some type of CC to them, if you aren't doing enough damage and focusing on them, they're regaining HP every single turn. This also goes for Mons like, um, what's her name? Not Fire Valk. Fire Nike, for example, who has Fearless Taunt, or Light Miho, who has Fearless Taunt. If they're getting HP, even though they're taking damage from Mons that they've aggroed, and they're out healing that, well, basically those Mons are an infinite loop, and they're never going to be able to defeat your Light Miho or Fire Nike, because they just can't ever burst them down, and Fearless Taunt just goes on forever. So, I mean, it, it definitely adds some strategy and adds some stability to Mons that would not die, on the other hand, but Mons that could use just a little bit more oomph to bring them to the point of where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop attacking this guy because I simply can't win with the setup that I have, which gives you a victory. That dude goes home with a sad face, and you go home after you check your victories for the MSL uh, PvP part of the league with a smiley face. Up next though we have the Gem of Magi set which gives you SP gain plus 10%. Uh, this is very very similar to the previous set where your mod is going to gain a set amount of SP regardless of what happens. And this is best used on balance types, healers, and tanks. And in my opinion it's just best used on a multitude of different mods. There's really no uh, tried and true method of using the Gem of uh, Magi set. So it's really up to you of where you want to use that with. But it may be the most beneficial on mons that you're already repping if possible with this set that have either high resist 
or something about them that could benefit from them getting their five star skill off regardless of what happens. So say for instance you had um, Water Wild Fang for example and you wanted to make sure that Petrification or is it Stun? I think it's Stun can get off. Um, even if they CC her, if she can come back the next turn and her SP is full even though she hasn't been able to act or gain any orbs, that's going to make someone curse. And it's super duper useful for not only Amons like her, which in my opinion are stallers, but self-sustainers, you can use it on crowd controllers. Basically any mon that you want is your set. Depending on how you use this set really depends on how much use you can get out of it. Like someone like It's SG would probably do like a pro gamer setup with this uh, Gem of Mag Magi set. Or Magi. Uh, is Mag Magi. Um, and put it on a mon that's going to make uh, fighting him a total F word. So it's really just up to you and I can't really give you guys a specific use of where I would put this gem set on a mon to use that. But think of your team composition and think of who could benefit from this the most, especially with max resist or near max resist and make things a living hell for whoever decides to attack you. That's the goal of this set. I mean, it's pretty much the goal of all sets, but we're not going to talk about that. Up next though boys is one of my favorite sets believe it or not, uh, Gem of Vitality which gives you 25% recovery. This is huge in terms of the your, of your healers and obviously it's best used on your healers which once again I when I say healers I'm meaning recovery types and then also your tanks and obviously the best use of this is on healers and tanks for titans. Like I said before in the other example. Mons that benefit from this the most is Water Bass because of its super duper low recovery. You have Mini Cat, you have Wood Hana, you have Pixie, you have, I don't know, uh, Water Cura, Fire Cura, uh, what was it? Fire Kernunos, Fire Cupid, etc. There's plenty of healer mons that you need on your Titan compositions, and giving them that additional recovery means you don't have to be super duper reliant on your subs, even though they should already have a recovery gem on them. And it gives you a little bit more breathing room with recovery so that you could focus on resist or more defensive stats on them. But highly recommend this set, it definitely helps out your healers a whole bunch. Moving on though, we have the Gem of Protection set, which gives, which gives you 20% defense boost once the set is fully up there on your mons. And this is best used on defender types, balance types, healers, and also tanks. And in my opinion, this is best used on aggressors or mons that need balancing. By balancing, I mean that if you have mons that already have either a high HP pool or essentially a high HP pool, you could, you could throw the gem, on, uh, gem of Protection set on them to kind of round them out because they're not getting super duper much defense because of all of their HP up there. And I'm not saying that this is purely for aggressors. These are for mons that you want to build just to be as um, annoying as possible. So say for instance you had your Water Wild Fang on HP, HP defense. If you could pull off like a Max Resist Gem of Protection set, why not do it? Not only is your Water Wild Fang going to have Water Wild Fang going to have a whole bunch of HP up there, but with 20% more defense being added up there, it's going to add up, especially with trinkets and enhancements as well, just to kind of round things out and bring things home. Um, my example for aggressors was once again like Light Nike. You could do um, Dark Sea Star, etc. Any other defense aggressor that you want. I wouldn't really put this on an HP aggressor though, for the simple fact that you could just put them. You know, you could put a Gem of Life set on them to get the most benefit from that. Moving on though, we have the Gem of Intuition set, which gives you 20% more crit rate. Um, this set is best used on attacker types and also balance types, and it's best used on crit reliant mons or high damage dealers. Now I said it before earlier in this video, if your mon says that they need crit, especially in their passive, or you have a mon like Dark Gatito that has Hunter, which has to have crit in order for it to activate, if not it's rendered useless. Gem of Intuition should be your first set that you strive towards getting on your mons, just to make sure that they're able to do what they need to do. Now, a good example of this is Fire Jacker or Fire uh, Siegfried, but those technically don't need um, crit at all to do their job. But does having crit damage on them more beneficial in the long run? Absolutely. If you can run a triple attack set of Gem of Intuition with super duper high crit rate, it's going to out damage a crit rate attack attack set. 
but in all other categories crit rate attack attack is going to do more damage than triple attack unless I think a triple attack has over 80 or 85 percent crit rate up there so even though they don't technically need it in this example they would benefit more from it than a just basic 20 percent boost in the valor set without any crit rate or crit damage subs up there and once again like Yuki even though she's not crit reliant um her shock will do a little bit more damage especially with her already having additional crit rate of her being a light type to whatever that you're fighting so once again she benefits from that and exam and for example dark types in general depending on what their kit is could also take advantage of this and any crit rate reliant mon uh, really takes advantage of gem of intuition so intuition should be like one of your first stop shops in terms of getting some decent damage out of your mons and i mean it's also usable on mons like uh wood merlin or crazy strikers as well especially as a more beginner friendly set because you can get more damage out of them than what you would with a valor set because more crit damage and a higher crit rate yields more than just raw 20 percent attack increase um, after that though we have the gem of life set which gives you a 20% HP boost and this is mainly used on types that are defenders, tanks, healers, and balance mons. And in my opinion this is best used on mons with high HP or to balance out specific mons for PvP, PvP slash clan versus clan. Like I stated before with my water wild thing example, if you wanted to round her out and she was on double defense and she had an HP gem and you could you know vouch for the extra resist why not put her on a gem of life set for right now until you get something better for her and go ahead and give her a little bit more hp so not only is she super duper tanky but she also has a lot of defense and another example is using this on mons that are hp aggressors and um yeah i mean that's pretty much it like dark arthur he's an hp aggressor even though it's only for one skill he has like the highest if not the second highest hp pool in the game so having him on a gem of life set with max resist is pretty beneficial since not only will his HP aggression do more damage, but he is in turn even more tankier. Water Shiva, same example right there. I think he has SP Siphon. And is he a HP aggressor? No, he, he has something else. He has something else. Yeah, he has Thirst. But Water Shiva already sits at nearly 50k HP, so giving him more HP isn't bad at all. There's no downside to that. So basically use this set on a mon that's either an aggressor or mons that you want to round out as my little example has provided to you and that should be pretty useful for you guys. Next up though is the Gem of Pugilist set. This gives you a 20% chance to stun on every move that you do in the game. Now this is best used on attacker types, balance types, defender types, and also tank types. And it's best used in, on mons that are participating in PvP slash clan versus clan. Yes, you can run a Pugilist set in Tower of Chaos if you want to be weird champ. If you want to be flexing, feel free to go ahead and do that. But wave clears basically just make Tower of Chaos at least the 1 through 120 floors a, a, a walk in the park. But in my uh, opinion, the Gemma Pugilist set is best used on mons like Light Leo. You can use them on Dark Yuki, Light Amayoji, Dark Merlin, etc. So any mons that you're bringing into PvP, that number one, either have morale boost like, like Leo, which means that they can get their 5 star skill off super duper quickly, or a more defensive mon like, like on my OG, Dark Yuki, Dark Merlin, etc. That even though they have stun or the ability to do crowd control already, this adds in another set of that. So this is applied separate from their own moves. So even though Merlin, for example, has like what, 100% chance to stun for one turn for his 5 star skill, Dark Merlin. So for instance, you drop that, the mon resists it. Well, Pugilist is on its own separate thing where, okay, the 100% didn't work. The game then goes and applies the Pugilist setup there. There's a 20% chance for you to stun them after that. You stun them. So it adds in just another layer of stun. If RNG is in your favor, same thing with Light Leo, same thing with Dark Yuki. You could sap them on and stun them. There's a whole bunch of utility here and it makes fighting mons, even though 20% seems like it's super duper low. If you're hitting quite a lot, it's going to work at some point in time and it can be super duper annoying, especially in a offensive situation because you can go into PvP, you could attack this Water Arthur who's on a Pugilist set who gets his 5 star skill off and even though it's very very improbable, it can happen and he stuns your entire squad. 
smiley face. And then over here we have the Gem of Bastion set, which, which gives you plus uh, 15,000 flat HP. Well, it's a shield, but I'm just going to call it HP. And this is best used on attackers, defenders, tanks, and then balance mons. And in my opinion, this is best used on nukers or crowd controller units that you want to keep alive at all costs. Uh, and a good example of that is Light Yuki, Light Griffin, etc. So any mons that you want to go in there and do some nuking with, or basically just crowd control mons in general, can benefit from the Gem of Bastion. Because, say for instance, your Light Yuki is super duper frail. She's running like crit damage attack attack she's not on ruin because you're weird champing it up and you want to make sure that she at least survives and long enough to get her active off where hopefully her light shock well not her light shock but her shock will stick while Gem of Bastion will give her a little bit leeway to take a little bit of damage and hopefully get those moves off without her dying and costing you your victory same thing with Light Griffin while Light Griffin is more of a crowd controller or he mainly supports crowd controllers you don't, let's say for instance, you don't have anywhere near max resist on him, and you know that if they hit him, he's going to TC him. Well, Gem of Bastion, even though that he's targeted, depending on how much damage those damage those mons do to him, hopefully he can survive long enough to get his resistance down AoE off, and then support Light Yuki with some CC damage, or support any other mons that you're bringing with some CC. So it's just about learning to use this set. Uh, depending on your needs, you can use it, as I said it before, on nukers or crowd controllers. It's really up to you. I do have my, like, Griffin on a Gem of Bastion set. And if you're going to run them on a Bastion set, though, in my opinion, it's okay for you to run them kind of, like, a little bit more frail than usual. Because Gem of Bastion does work, and it's something that is great to have. And the good part about Gem of Bastion, though, is you don't need super duper high resist to get away with running your Mon. Uh, a little a little bit more DPS orientated so do keep that in mind and then last but not least boys we have the gem of ruin set which gives you 40% crit damage um, which is pretty poggers now this is best used on attacker types balance types certain defenders and tanks as well and by certain defenders and tanks I mean mons that are probably going to be a dark type just FYI because of the additional crit damage not saying that you can't run an RGB on the same set, but it is what it is. But this is best used on nukers and then courageous strikers. Dark Ender, for example, like I said earlier in the video, takes a hefty bonus from this because not only is he a dark type with his base 100% crit damage, but having him on a Gem of Ruin set like mine is currently on, which is a crit damage attack attack set, means not only am I getting that 100% crit damage base, but I'm getting 40% on top of that 100%. Then I'm also getting the benefit from my crit damage gem. And then I also have enhancements. So we're sitting at a hell of a hella high amount of crit damage from that. That's where all your damage comes from. And in my opinion, this is probably the best set in the game for your damage dealers for the simple fact of how much damage you can get off of this. Fire Jacket, for example, can be used on a ruin set as well if you want to do the most damage possible. Fire Jacket doesn't need to be on an SP Siphon set. Uh, Fire Jacket doesn't need to be on a Valor set. Doesn't need to be on Intuition. Can also be on a Ruin set. But do keep in mind, if you want the most damage out of a Ruin set, that Mon has, has to have a Triangle slot. Has to have. I know Triple Square Master Race was a, a big meme back in the day. But honestly, if you're not having a Mon with a Triangle slot that you're trying to get some hella DPS out of, you're kind of gypped because crit damage can only happen on a triangle slot. And once again, with Merlin, I mean, basically, if you have nukers or courageous strikers, mainly dark types and obviously the titan oriented courageous strikers, not really unflinching strikers, but courageous strikers, benefit the most from this. But I mean, any mon could. That is an attacker type with that additional crit damage, but it's already hard enough getting a good set of Gem of Ruin, so I would reserve this for my biggest damage dealers, which is going to be your Nukers and Courageous Strikers. But that pretty much ends the video, you guys. I'm sorry that this one's super duper long, but I didn't think at the time as I was doing this that there was this many gem sets that I had to talk about. And even though you've probably clicked off this video, you've already hit it with a, with a dislike. Do you remember if you just want to put it on mute and someone wants to put in like the time stamps for when I check out these gems, there is the matter over here on the left side, which dicks 
which dictates uh, what type of mon type that I would use these gem sets on just to make life easier. So do remember that and let me scroll up while I thank you guys if you made it this far in the video. I definitely hope this video helped at least to broaden your horizons with what type of gem sets that you should be putting on your mon and how you should use those mons. And do keep in mind that this is all 100% advice. It could be taken the wrong way. You could disagree with some of the things I said. And you know what? That is okay. I just want to thank you for stopping by and giving me some of your time. But that's it, you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps clears up a couple of things, especially with newer players in terms of in terms of gem sets. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button though.